Next up, we have Bedeviled. And Bedeviled is directed by the Bang Brothers. It's... I saw a lot of people saying, you know, it's not that bad. And I'll tell you this group, it's not that bad. It reminds me of an 80s kind of scenario that would have happened had we had smartphones in the 80s. It's about a haunted app that... You know, kind of like in Nightmare on Elm Street, where you have Freddy, and he haunts people in their dreams. But in this, it's a group of friends, and they're being haunted by this app. And strange things happen, and they're seeing, like, freaky stuff. They see this, like, weird demon dude with a smiley face, with a bow tie, and he haunts them with their biggest fears. Now, the only difference is, they, instead of sleeping, like in Freddy, like, they get... It happens to them when the phone starts interacting with them, and then, like, it messes with their brain, and they start seeing things. Now, my only problem with the devil is, it takes a good 40 minutes before we start getting, like, a slasher movie kill count. Now, a lot of slasher movies, they slowly, progressively have a kill within every 5, 10, 20 minutes. This, like, waits to, like, the 40 minutes... It's for, for that, most of the movie, they're being terrorized by Mr. Bedevil and scary. But it's not to like that later mark where he's like, alright, I'm going to start picking you off. That's my only problem. That's a slight problem because it does have some good jump scares, good classic slasher elements. It has a cool looking uh, bad guy in Mr. Bedevil. And I really like the idea of this app. Even though if I had this weird app talking to me, I would probably return my phone. But you never know. He might show up in a new phone and in the next phone. So what would you do with an app that haunts you? It's a good movie. A good bad movie. It's a good B-movie slasher that a lot of people would dismiss because the acting's not all there. The directing's not all there. But it never feels... Wait, they just didn't get the crap. Like, it didn't feel... It didn't feel rushed into the very f last five minutes where they're like, Alright, come on, we gotta... We gotta end this terror and... You know, fi finish this movie. But, never was I bored. Never did I want... Never was there... Cheap scares. Every scare in this movie was earned. It, it follows the rule book of a slasher movie. With super supernatural elements, it's got five. It's a four point five on Internet Movie Database, which, um, you know, I mean, that's a lot of people thinking this should have been as good as a movie theater horror movie. Now, people forget this time of going to Blockbuster and taking a gamble on a little known unknown slash movie. This, in my aspect, in my mind, if you took, if you got this from Blockbusters, I think this is more in the lines of in the early 90s when you would take a chance with an arts and entertainment movie or even a full moon entertainment movie. Like, if you took a gamble on one of them and you watched this, I don't think you would think it was a, a terrible um, rental. It's, every rental was like four bucks, so... You would tend to push the envelope on how much you feel like that, how good it was. Like, oh, well, I spent four bucks on this, and you'd be hitting yourself over the head. But in this, in times of like Dream Master and uh, Wish Master, Wish Master and its sequels, you would kind of just say, well, it wasn't terrible. At least I got some good scares out of it. My four bucks from Blockbuster. So out of this, I give it a six out of ten for being a, a very presentable slash movie. Check it out <clears throat> if you want to see that in a, in a movie. Cheesy but slashy. Check out The Devil.